So trying this again, a uh, bit of problems with the first uh, live that I tried. It's on 4G instead of Wi-Fi, that'll, uh, that'll help. So second time around, um, if you saw the first five minutes of the previous live that I did, uh, the topic today that I wanted to talk about was um, kids and money and uh, I guess helping your children form some, some good money habits early on. Now, if you're watching this for the second time, let me know, drop a comment, uh, let me know you're there. I've got the iPad and I can, I can see who's, who's, um, who's tuning in. Um, so I guess in, in, in terms of money, our beliefs around money are formed really early on in, in life. Uh, you know, things like money doesn't grow on trees, easy come, easy go, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, all of those kind of things. Uh, we hear around the home, we hear on TV, we hear in movies, and, and they, they sit with us subconsciously from, from early on in life. Uh, and often those habits can be, although those beliefs can be hard to change if, if we don't really concentrate on them. So depending on what your upbringing was like and depending on what money was like in your own home, you'll have a certain set of beliefs uh, of how you know, money is and how you act around, uh, around money. Uh, that'll be different to your partner, that'll be different to your colleague at work, that'll be different to the person that you're sitting next to on the train on the way home from, from work tonight. So we all have these different beliefs uh, and, and, and it's all really formed on, on our own upbringing uh, and, and our own how we were as, as, as children in, in the home. What makes things uh, even more tricky for, uh, for young children now, whether they're you know, five, six, seven or eight, whether they're teenagers, whether they're early 20s, we often also don't actually touch money, so you know it, it's not often certainly that I'm buying things with cash. I'll, I'll often buy things with tapping my card and going, or or using my phone tapping and and going. Um, so I guess trying to get children to understand, you know, you go to work, you earn some money, you 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 get this reward, and then you go and spend that. It's a, it's a bit difficult. I know with my own my own eldest son, he's he said to me in the past, oh, when I grow up, Dad, I want to get one of these credit cards so I can tap and just buy things and, I, and you have to say, stop, hang on mate, I go to work, I earn some money, it goes into the bank, this is actually cash that I'm spending, albeit you don't see it like the, the pile of $2 coins that he's collected up in his, in his wallet. Now money is also one of the um, biggest causes of divorce, so we aren't really taught how to manage money through, through the school system. If you go on to study accounting or finance or anything like that, you'll learn about taxes and, and basics, but, you, but we aren't really taught personal finance and how to manage our own money. Now when, if you, you know, if and when you find a partner and you come together, as I said, money, uh, money and, and, and money worries is, is often one of the leading causes of divorce. Now that, uh, I guess, I, I kind of believe that that's, that's probably partly not the individual people's fault. That's, you've got these two people coming together, they've each had their own upbringing in different households, coming together, different beliefs around money formed early on, and if uh, they're not spending some time working through that and coming up with joint beliefs around money together, uh, you can cause some friction and then, and then ultimately end in, um, end in divorce. So um, I, I guess how do we stop our children and how can we help educate our children so that they're not repeating you know, some of our own mistakes or mistakes of our own parents uh, and, and, and repeating them for, you know, through generation and generation. Now it might come as a little surprise to you uh, that I guess if you've, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I'm a strong believer in uh, in some type of structure and process around uh, around what it is that you're doing. So the same thing for, for for children. I guess as adults, if we're given a lump sum of money, so say you're paid on a monthly basis, for example, you get this lump sum of money falls into your bank account. It can be difficult to. Uh, to see, you know, forward the next four weeks, the next five weeks as to how that money is going to, to, to survive. Uh, you know, you, you'll feel quite wealthy in the first week or so, uh, and, and then, and then as, as you're getting towards the next payday, uh, often for most people, the bank account's starting to, to get a bit skinny. So how can we put in place a structure, I guess for the adults, but, but then also try and teach our, our, our kids to, to, to adopt something similar? Uh, and I think for children, it's more about trying to form uh, some repeatable habits early on in life so that they can uh, be set up well and, and take that with them forward uh, in, in, for years into the future. So children will often get money, you know, maybe it's for, for birthday presents or some type of religious event or something like that, and, uh, and, they'll, and they'll get these, these money as, as gifts essentially uh, in, in early on in their, in their lives. 
um, something that I would encourage you to explore with your children is setting up a structure around well, what to do with that, that, that money. And I think uh, breaking it up into three categories can work quite, quite well if you adopt this. So some money to spend, some money to save, and some money to invest uh, for, for later. So the spend money is, is about allowing you know, children, whether they're young, whether they're starting part-time work or you know, f finishing uni and, and going on to full-time work, but, but some of that money to spend now, so that kind of instant gratification. So whether it's you know, a pack of footy cards, whether it's some lollies, whether it's a box of Lego, whatever, whatever it might be, but some instant gratification with spending some money now I think is okay. The second one about uh, save, some to save is, is about trying to get into the habit of setting short-term monetary goals. So I, I posted a video earlier on uh, in the week about um, my son and the favourite things that he, to do on the weekend. One of his favourite things to do on the weekend is, is build, build Lego. And so if he needs 20 or $30 for a box of Lego, something that he could be doing is uh, as one of his uh, savings goals is to say, well, I want this box of Lego, it's going to cost me $20 or $30, whatever it's going to cost, uh, and, and set a target to save towards that. Now, when he gets there, go and buy the Lego, you know, celebrate that and as, as a reward for, for reaching the goal. Then the third one is around investing. Now, depending on how old your children might be, true investing in terms of, you know, buying shares or property and businesses and those kind of things might not be appropriate. Uh, but but the similar habits can be can be uh, forged by uh, setting up a uh, just another online savings account where this money goes into some some regular amount or some portion of birthday presents or whatever it is that is for for not spending so some instant gratification through the spend some short term monetary goals through the saving and then the investing is the do not touch that's for you know for for, for investing as 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 I said. So that might be saving into, into a bank account at least initially. As they get older, as there's a bit more money involved, maybe shares start to become uh, you know, something that they could be looking at. Or and if they're older again and working full-time work, maybe they want to buy a house, investment property, whatever it is. But that's, that's the purpose of that, that investment money. Now, some parents that I know uh, will, will do, have some type of arrangement where they might match dollar for dollar uh, any investing that their children are doing, so that kind of reinforcing uh, that that behaviour that, that that we're trying to get to. The barefoot investor has a similar kind of uh, thing that he does, uh, or he recommends in, in in his books. I've seen a couple of posts on it, something to do with jars. You know, some for now, some for later, and some for donating. I think is 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 maybe the way that he goes about doing it. It's following that 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 same kind of idea that's separating it out. I encourage my older working clients to do it. it it's a similar kind of thing that, we'd, that I'd encourage you to explore with your children. Breaking some up and saying some's for now, some's for later, and some's for maybe donating if that's, if that's what, what you want to encourage in your household. More than anything though, it's about setting habits uh, early on uh, so that they can be repeated as if the kids get older, early adulthood, you know, first jobs, and, and, and set them up, up really well for, for, for life moving forward. Hope this was useful to you. Um, not a whole lot of people tuning in the second time around, so that's that, that's okay. Um, but hopefully this one works a bit better. As I said in the end of the previous video that you didn't see, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and have a great weekend. See you soon. Bye.